everyone. Brooks Kubik, John Wood here. Uh, we're back with the Dinosaur Radio podcast, and this is episode number eight. Um, John, today I'd like to talk a bit about uh, something new for people, and that is the May issue of the uh, Dinosaur Files and some of what we have in it. Um, you've seen the issue. Mm -hmm. uh, what, uh, what jumped out about it uh, from, from your perspective? I think it was another strong issue. Uh, what I like about the Dino Files is that this is real world stuff. This is the stuff that's working. This is the stuff that comes straight from your training. Uh, it's not the type of thing that is, um, unfortunately, you see a lot of out there and that they're, they're just making stuff up. And you can tell sometimes, most times, when somebody writes a, an article and says, oh, what about this magic exercise or these 10 magic exercises? And it's like, oh, uh, what's so great about doing pressing exercises on your knees on a, against the power rack, you know, how does that, what is that? Other than just a, something novel, what is that actually accomplishing? So uh, to me, the, the Dinosaur Files is a, a monthly reminder that basic is always better, uh, generally shorter is always better to the point, focused, focused work, um, dedicated work uh, to what you're doing. And I think that it's, with the way that the internet is now there's so much stuff out there that it's easy to get sidetracked or it's easy to to forget sometimes that basic is is the way to go so uh, i think that apart from anything else apart from all the other value that the dinosaur files provides i think having that monthly reminder is uh, is something that's very important i i, I really agree with that and i think it's more important now than ever um in, in the day of social media. Mm. You, you know, the, the, the social media engine drives people to look for stuff that is increasingly more and more over the top, you know, more and more and more bizarre. And in strength training, what that means is at one time, perhaps social media was sharing useful, valuable things that you could try doing yourself. That quickly faded into an era of social media sharing stuff that is weird in many cases, not very useful um, and downright dangerous. I mean, you know, you've got gym fails, which obviously you don't want to do, mm -hmm. but why do we even bother watching them? Yeah. You know, what, what's the value of watching gym fails? You know, an, answer, in my opinion, there's no value. Mm -hmm. um, you've got uh, a modern muscle media where everybody has to try to uh, be different, you know, to stand out with something over the top, crazy, unique. And so you have, you know, famously, we had the photo of somebody standing on a Swiss ball, stability ball, doing a back squat, which is not a really good exercise in my opinion for a whole lot of reasons. Um, but that was just the start. Um, I coined the phrase squats on roller skates to epitomize crazy exercises that people do on social media. I deliberately chose that because I didn't think anyone would ever do it. Squats on roller skates, right? And eventually after a couple of years, I'm told by some of my readers that yes, there are videos where people do exercises on roller skates. And I'm like, well, I haven't seen those, don't want to. Um, and I think what I wanna do is to, uh, to focus on giving real world, sound, sensible, sane strength training advice, which unfortunately for looks and likes um, is usually fairly basic stuff. And it's not particularly interesting. Um, you can go. You can go to um, your Instagram, and you can go to my Instagram. And there are times where one or the other of us will post a photo from a workout or a video from a workout doing something that is a hellaciously difficult thing to do, you know, a maximum effort something. 
And it often doesn't look like much of anything mm -hmm. in the social media world, because the social media world says you need to be bouncing on a pogo stick while you're wearing roller skates, um, you know, with a Batman suit on uh, in order to make this exercise be deemed worthy of likes and looks. Uh, you know, your, your video, of the, you know, the handstand push-up, not the handstand push-up, the fingertip push-up hold, you know, for two nonstop minutes, uh, that's a really difficult thing to do. A super difficult thing to do. And anyone who doesn't think so should just, you know, get down right now and try it. It's, it's not easy. But it does not lend itself to looks and likes. Mm -hmm. Because it's you doing the same thing for two minutes. Um, and dinosaur files, you know, is is kind of like that in a way because it, you know, I just don't give people weird, strange, crazy, exotic, entertaining, over the top stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's basic stuff, basic exercises, basic equipment. Um, you know, with a hard nosed just do it attitude, you know, and that's old school, old school as can be, but it's a, it's a good reminder every month for people to, to get that, to read it. It comes in PDF you can print it out and hold it in your hand and sit there and underline parts that are particularly important and make little marginal notes, you know, really let the information sink in, um, or you can just use your device, whichever you prefer. Um, but that kind of thing, I think, is very um, significant, very, um, very important for people. So, got a got a good strong issue. Uh, I don't know why I keep using that phrase. You used it earlier, and uh, <laughs> you know, it's yeah, it. Uh, oh, it, it is. It is. It is a strong it is. issue. Yeah. So, yeah, well, in this issue, you uh, you spent a lot of time talking about specialization programs, and I think that's important because to a lot of people, specialization on arms or grip or back or whatever means, uh, or at least their understanding is do do 100 exercises, do 50 exercises, and um, there's certainly not nothing wrong with variety on occasion, but at the same time, uh, there's a limit in terms of basic physiology is to what's actually going to work. So I think that this is a, a real good analysis of saying, okay, well, maybe you want to put an inch on your arms and look good at the beach. Here's a couple exercises to do. Here's how to apply them. Here's how to drop them in. And it's also not going to affect your other training because you can't just drop everything else. And that's not a part of it either. You've got to make it all work together in, in a synergistic manner. Right. Yeah, and you know what, what? What I do in this in this issue is is to say, here's how you set up a specialization program and balance it with training the rest of the body. And one way that you do that is, although you may do some additional exercises for whatever part of the body you're focusing on, you're specializing on, and you may do more sets and you may do more volume. It's not just about volume. In fact, the most important part of the specialization program is targeting the, the, the group you're hitting with harder ways to train and to do that in a progressive fashion. And so you have workouts that are not super long and not super time consuming, but they hit the targeted part of the body really hard and then after you've been doing that for a while and you, you've started to build up the tendons and ligaments and, and build up your uh, conditioning, you make it harder, not longer, but harder. And you know, so I work through that kind of progression, give some good concrete examples, uh, specialization program for the upper arms, because of course, arms, everybody likes arm training and a specialization program for the back. And the back is an interesting one because if you did a period of leg specialization followed by a period of back specialization, and then you went back to leg specialization, and then you went back to back specialization, 
you know, that's the Lewis Abelly way of building up to be, you know, as big and muscular and strong as your body will ever allow you to be. Um, you know, so that's a pretty good, pretty good program. And it's not just upper back. It's not just about uh, hidden lat power to use a phrase from the old Weeder magazines. You know, it's about building your entire back, lower back, mid back, uh, you know, the, uh, the lats, the traps, and some of the smaller muscle groups. So, you know, a lot of the upper back muscles uh, have a very important uh, function working with the shoulders, helping for, you know, helping promote shoulder stability. Uh, we don't often target them, but I've, I've included them in these programs. And um, it's, a, it's a really good thing. So I'm hoping that people will, will read the issue and try the programs. And that's always my hope whenever I write workouts up in the Dynafiles is not just that people read about them, but that they try them, you know, that they, they give them an honest try and see how they work. Uh, so that's interesting. So a lot, of, a lot of good stuff in this month's issue. And I think another thing worth pointing out, at, at just as uh, overall with the Dinosaur Files, is that if you look at the mainstream muscle publications over the last 50 years, you'll see a lot of overlap in terms of the topics that they cover. You'll see a bunch of arm articles. You'll see a bunch of uh, back articles, shoulders, chest, all that kind of stuff. And that, ha that has its place, but it neglects certain areas that, that uh, are important in the grand scheme of things. So you very seldom will see an article on grip training, very seldom will see an article on the lower back. And uh, in many cases, these are the types of things that you're gonna get out of the dinosaur files is, is that it addresses these areas which are important, especially for older lifters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's very true. And, and that's another thing that you don't see in the mainstream magazines. And historically was almost never seen in, in the mainstream magazines. And that is training advice for older trainees. You know, you always see stuff, you know, but the muscle magazines traditionally catered to teenagers. And they were read by guys from, you know, 12 to 22, 25, maybe 30, early 30s. And then people stopped training. You know, they were married, they had kids, they, they were working, whatever. They, they just weren't doing it anymore. Um, the magazines would always feature the young champions who were, people in their late teens, early 20s, mid 20s. And, you know, by the time you were in your late 20s, early 30s, you were basically too old to be a world-class competing athlete. And so the magazine said, well, we don't care about you anymore. Mm -hmm. So they, they didn't cover them. So there's never been a lot of stuff for older trainees. And in the Dynafiles, um, you know, I'm always including material for older trainees. Uh, older trainees are, you know, probably the, the highest percentage of our readership. And by older, I'm referring to anyone, I guess, 40, 40 and up, uh, you know, definitely 50 and up. Um, I don't view 40 as particularly old, but, you know, I'm 64 now. So I have a, a different view of things. But it's, it's an interesting magazine that provides very useful information if you're the 12 year old kid starting out or the 15 year old kid starting out. If you're the 20 year old stud that, you know, is training to, you know, play division one football or you know, want to make it into the, uh, the NFL. Um, but it's also something that speaks to people in their 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s and 80s. I and mean, I've got readers in their 80s who are reading the, the issue every month and they're training if not every day two or three times a week mm -hmm. which is pretty cool um you know don't find a lot of magazines or, or um, newsletters uh, training sources anywhere that cater to the older training and and not just in a condescending way or a you know you're old and feeble so you have to train in an old and feeble manner I and mean, it's about serious stuff for lifelong trainers. So good stuff from that perspective. And I think it's very interesting and important to point out that the principles of what we call and refer to older training 
are important and perhaps even more important to younger trainees because you're taking into account practicality, you're taking into account safety, you're taking into account the way the physiology actually functions instead of bombing and blitz, blitzing and uh, being a total meathead and uh, spending all day in the gym, uh, you'll actually, in many cases, I have little doubt that if a 20-year-old stud took one of these workouts and really focused on it and really put a lot of effort into it and did it the way that it was intended, uh, he would get tremendous results uh, because you're cutting away all the uh, the fluff of the, uh, the the superficial bombing and blitzing that you're seeing in the the typical publications that they're going to have access to or that are written specifically for them. One of our longtime readers um, is a man my age uh, who's had a home gym his entire life. Um, used that home gym to train his sons for high school sports. Um, actually wrote about that in an issue of the Dinosaur Files a fair ways back. Um, and the last two years, he has sent me uh, a Super Bowl program. <laughs> okay. And the reason that he's done that is that one of his sons who grew up in the home gym training with dad and using a lot of the techniques that we cover in the Dinosaur Files and that I cover in my other books and courses and John that, that you cover in your materials. Um, his son is now playing in the NFL. Uh, he's on the Chiefs. And in two years of pro football, he's been in the Super Bowl two times. <laughs> and he's got one championship ring. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's not bad. Yeah. That's, that's pretty good for a relatively small readership. I, I don't think many magazines out there on a percentage of readers uh, who have a kid who makes it in the, uh, the Super Bowl, uh, we're probably ranking pretty high. Mm -hmm. you know, but it's, it's because the advice is, is real world useful, good advice. And as you said, good for people of all ages. Um, if you're a younger guy, you can probably get away with most things, many things. Uh, a lot of things that an older trainee probably shouldn't try, but why do it? Yeah. There are better ways, there are safer ways, there are more effective ways, there are more efficient ways. And that's what we cover in the Dynaflex. I think uh, getting away with it is a, a good way to put it because there's some people that uh, they're really, based on their training alone, they're playing with fire. Um, yes. You know, They get through it by luck alone. It's not because of the training, it's because by happenstance, they just didn't injure themselves. So uh, you can train certain ways to where injury is, uh, or the likelihood of injury is pretty much zero. And if you do that, then then you're focusing on the growth. You're focusing on the, the development, the muscular improvements, and all the things that you want, and and all avoiding the stuff that you don't. Yeah, yeah. And you know, you you realize that later in life. Um, you know, you don't. You don't know it when you're in your teens. You don't know it when you're in your twenties. Probably you, you think you're indestructible, um, but the thing to do is to focus for lifelong strength and health. And lifelong strength and health doesn't start at age fourteen when you get your first barbell, and then stop at age nineteen or age twenty or whatever age. It lifelong means. You start where you start and you keep going for the rest of your life. You know, that, that's it. Mm. And all your training should be focused on making that happen, on being able to start and keep going and keep training, keep having fun with it and keep making progress, keep making gains. Not necessarily being world-class elite strong for your entire life. That's not going to happen for every for, for anyone. I mean, obviously, at some point in life, you know, you know, you, you can't maintain that. You can't do it in your 50s or 60s. But you stay incredibly strong, healthy, and fit. And by comparison to anyone else in your age group, you know, you are literally off the chart superhuman. 
And it's the result of regular progressive consistent training. Uh, works miracles. Mm. And you know, that's something that many of my readers, your readers, um, our readers have experienced firsthand. They know it, they understand it. I'd like everyone, everyone in the whole world to know and experience that because it's just, it's a wonderful thing. So that's my mission. It's a, it's a very simple one. Everyone in the world's strong and healthy for their entire lives. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you don't want to have a situation and unfortunately you see this more and more is that guys that they train for a while, they may get very strong, but then they end up blowing out a shoulder, blowing out a knee and they're in a position to where they either lose interest or they just simply can't physically train at all. And, and that's it. That's, you know, guys that are my age, I mean, I'm 42 uh, and even younger than that in some cases to where it's like they, they shoot to the top and then they drop just as far. And then what they, within a few years, they're, they're, um, they've lost any amount of muscle they ever had. And, and it becomes a, a real quality of life issue. And that shouldn't be on the table when you're, you know, when you're 40 years old. So, um, and so you want to, I mean, a lot of, there's a lot of stuff tied up here. You want to be able to play basketball with your grandkids. You want to be able to play catch out in the backyard. Uh, you don't want to say, oh, you know, I wish I could do that, but uh, my shoulders don't work anymore. My knee doesn't work anymore. Uh, so, I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot riding on getting this right. Yeah. And, and, you know, getting it right is not a matter of luck. It's a matter of information. Yeah. So the critical thing to do to help people is to get the information out there. Yep. So uh, we can get this issue. You can order this issue at uh, brookscubic.com. Look for the menu choice. Uh, I believe it says PDF downloads and there's a link right to it. Uh, Brooks will obviously promote it through his email list and I will send out a link as well. And uh, we will go from there. Sounds good. So long everyone. All right.